Hello everyone, um, I am back again. I had a request to make a grade 10 video explaining all the different types of accounts we get in accounting. So I've done just that. It is purely grade 10 level, but if you are grade 11 or 12, it's sometimes just good to go back to the basics and make sure that your foundation is um, solid and I hope you enjoy it and please remember to subscribe to my channel and look out for new videos to come soon. So I start with my page and you can actually go and draw this out at home um, landscape and then I divide it into three columns. You'll see I'm going to write my headings over there and then I've got a little T that I've drawn at the bottom of all three columns. Okay, so I'm going to start and I'm going to focus on the first heading which will be my assets. Now, you need to know the entire list of assets and you need to know um, how to classify all of them. So under assets, I've got two main headings. Okay, we've got non-current assets and then we've got current assets. So you need to know that non-current asset is an asset that I've got for longer than 12 months, okay? And a current asset is an asset that I've got for shorter than 12 months, okay? And then we're gonna classify them. So the first one that I start with over there is land and buildings, then vehicles, Equipment, that's the three main ones. And then we also have our financial assets, our fixed deposit. Okay, so those four are my non-current assets. You normally have them for longer than a year. They will not change within a year. My current assets, I have a, a little a list that's a bit longer. We start with trading stock. Then we've got data's control. Bank. Petty cash. cash float. Then you might also get a couple of others um, linked to these three. If my fixed deposit will mature, that means some of it, part of it, will be paid back, then the little bit that's paid back will now be classified as a short-term asset. Um, with my bank, my cash float, and my petty cash. In some textbooks, you get something like a savings account or a notice deposit, and that's also seen as um, will be entered over here with all my money items under current assets. Then you will also learn now going into term three of grade 10 uh, that we get something like consumable stores on hand okay so that will also be classified as a short-term asset and then you'll also learn of two new uh, ones that will be linked with debtors control and we call them accrued income and prepaid expense So those are all my assets. Then if we get to my little T account here at the bottom, you need to learn that assets will increase on the debit side and minus on the credit side. So every time the business basically gets one of those assets, we're going to put it on the debit side. And if they lose it or sell it, it will go on the credit side. Um, with trading stock, we'll see that a lot. When we sell, um, it will go on the credit side. Okay, so that is my 
assets. If we then go to the top of the next column, we are now going to look at owner's equity. Okay, owner's equity uh, works a little different. We've got in grade 10 two main accounts and those two main accounts are linked to the owner. My kids in my class are um, joking with me about my stock money keys that I'm drawing, but I think it, you get the picture. So the first one is then capital and the second one is drawings. So those two accounts are not specifically um, classified as you'll see now income or expenses when I go down. They are just linked to the owner and you need to know that. Then we get uh, our heading called for income. So all my income accounts are classified together and all my expense accounts are classified together. Going from or coming from grade nine, you have now seen the majority of them. So we'll have sales as income, rent income, any interest income. Uh, you will classify it as interest on current account or interest on fixed deposit, etc. And then a new one that you're going to see in a little while, it might appear, is bad dates recovered. Oh, we've done it when we did the re uh, the We've done that when we did the general journal. Then under my expenses, oh, there's a whole list. You need to be aware that debtors allowance is an expense, cost of sales. Uh, then you get a whole bunch of other expenses such as telephone, we've got water and electricity, and then you're gonna learn some new ones now as well. If we then go to my T account here at the bottom, Owner's equity will increase on the credit side and it will decrease on the debit side. So capital and any and all of my income will always increase my capital and drawings and expenses, all of them, will always decrease my capital. So when I explain it to the kids in my class, I'll start with I've got the small white bin in my class. Any money going into the bin uh, will make my bin become bigger. The more money goes in, then all of a sudden the bigger my bin needs to become. If money goes out, it might, it might mean that my big bin now becomes small again. And this bin belongs to the owner, owner's equity. So think of it as your bin. Will my bin become bigger? Yes, with those two. Or will my bin become smaller if I pay or give money away? Those two. And whatever is in the bin will then belong to the owner, which is owner's equity. And then the last one will be my liabilities. Okay. Now liabilities is the opposite of my assets, but it works in the same way. I will have two headings. Over there I had two headings. Uh, I will have non-current liabilities and I will have current liabilities similar as my assets non-current means longer than 12 months and current means shorter than 12 months then what are seen as my long-term liabilities you get a loan and sometimes in your books they refer to a mortgage loan. They are basically one and the same. A mortgage loan is what you get to take out when you want to buy property. Otherwise, you just take out a normal loan. Under my current liabilities, I will have creditors control. I will have a short-term part of the loan 
you will learn this now in term three this is when i'm going to pay back a part of my loan in the next year so then i'll split it into long term and short term and then bank overdraft if it's in overdraft will also fall under current liabilities and then there's a whole list of new ones i'm just going to add over here to my creditors linked to my creditors we will have a crude expense that you're going to learn about and income received in advance okay as I said, there's a lot more as well, but for now, you'll see that's accrued expense. Over here, we had accrued income. Over there, we had prepaid expense. There, we have income received in advance. Creditors, debtors. So it's basically the opposite that we deal with over here. So for now, learn that this is all your liabilities. Then if we go to my little T, liabilities will increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. So when I get a liability, which means you either bought on credit or you owe something and you owe more, then it will increase your liabilities. And the moment you, moment you pay back what you owe, it will decrease your liability. Okay, I hope this helped a bit. So there's my entire piece of paper that I use to study and I actually have I've done this in my class uh, a4 paper for assets for owners equity and for liabilities that I've put up so you can actually do it on a4 if you want to but this is very a nice summary to help you along with everything you're going to do for the rest of your grade 10 accounting year.